Folks, welcome back. Today, uh, what do we got in the background here, everybody? We got, uh, I don't even know, have we filmed over here? I don't know if we filmed here. Uh, we got, um, uh, I think this is my palette of, oh, this is Commander Legends 1. Uh, <laughs> oh god, call time over there. Please don't look at my call time. Um, uh, there's call time there. Oh, there's double feature. Had to get that from another store because I couldn't get it because I don't believe in the WPN garbage. But yeah, hey, there's Commander Legends. Alright, so folks, sit back. Today's conversation, ah, oh god. Did you miss me? You haven't seen my face for like a day. I know I look older, don't I? Rudy, you always look old. This is a serious channel. You guys laughing at my jokes. What's wrong with you? I don't like that. Make sure you thumbs down on the way out, folks. Okay. <sighs> Today we're talking about market stability. Today we want to talk about... Um, I'm starting to see signs that... Um, the end is near. I checked this morning and the sun did not actually come up. There was an IOU message and the sun just says, bro, I ain't coming up today. And I was like, you gotta come up. I tell everybody on the internet, the sun always comes up the next day. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. That was my attempt at a joke. I wrote that last night. Um, we're seeing signs of stability. Now, I'm hoping over the next uh, two to four weeks, as we leave this cruel summer of 2022, we start to see moving into Dominari uh, United, Dominari Unlimited, as some people are joking about it. Because there's going to be unlimited supply, so Wizards can make tendies. They're calling it Dominari Unlimited, because they're going to print so much, it's going to feel like unlimited supply. Um, it looks like I'm seeing signs of prices finding their spot. So when I'm looking at some of the 2021 era sets, we don't look at anything older than that. Anything older than 2021, you get into the, you know, let's see, what do we got in the background? Throne of Eldraine, Pharos, Core 21, Aquaria. Those products are all fine. They're all going up, they're all doing very well, but I'm gauging the, the stability of the market based on recent stuff, which is more like call time Ford, call time, you know, Strixhaven, AFR. Um, then we go into, you know, Midnight Hunt, Crimson Val, um, Boulder's Gate, uh, Kamigawa, Barry Manilow Streets, and of course, uh, Dominari Unlimited coming up soon. Um, first of all, Boulder's Gate draft and set is doing a lot better than I expected. Uh, collector boxes have stabilized at about 180 plus tax in the open market, just under 200 out the door. That caught me off guard. I thought for sure that we'd see a lot more panic selling. As we're leaving the summer, now, a lot. Of, I talked to some other stores, and the theories that we came up with is uh, Double Masters saved everybody's ass, essentially. Uh, the injection of cash and profit by many stores with Double Masters um, was able to get us out of the hole of Boulder's Gate. And I kind of agree with that. So I think um, the success of Double Masters and with Dominari Unlimited coming out soon, as long as Dominari hits and fires on all cylinders and does well, the cruel summer is going to come to an end and stores across the country are going to be a lot more financially stable. I think because of that alone, um, a lot of the pressure of fire selling Magic product in 2021 era product at a loss is going to start to be uh, pulled back. Because again, if you're an LGS owner, first of all, I'm sorry. Your stepsister says hello. She makes a wonderful breakfast on Saturdays. Number two, you are forced to sell items at a loss because you're needing to raise capital to pay your overhead, fixed costs, employees, labor, payroll, and all that other stupid stuff. And um, once that desperation to stay in business is removed, once that risk, that solvency risk goes away, um, stores tend to say, you know what, screw it, I'm not going to put my Boulder's Gate collector boxes for $179 plus tax. I, I'm pulling down, I'm waiting, I ain't going to take that kind of a loss. You start to see, well, Crimson Val, Midnight Hunt, AFR, this and that. nah, pull them down. What do we got left? Uh, Ten boxes of each, screw it, keep them. I, I ain't selling everything at 20-30% loss. You, you, in other words, when the pressure gets removed in a successful launch of Double Masters re-injects re capital and liquidity into the system, you start to notice everything else feeling different. You start to notice everything else isn't dropping anymore. And a lot of people need to understand the way an entire ecosystem of the world of magic works is when the market goes through a, a liquidity capital, you know, credit crunch type thing like in 08 and everybody's panicking that all their inventory is, you know, mortgage-backed securities and subprime toxic this and that. And, um, you know, people start panicking. And they say, you know what, I'll take 70 cents in the dollar. I'll take 60 cents in the dollar. Stores just fire sell it. And we saw that. I mean, I remember the low. I think Crimson Val draft boxes 
Didn't they hit like 70 bucks or $75 on like TCG player for a couple days or for a week, like a couple months back? And of course, those stores got flushed out. And well, prices are kind of back to where they should be. Draft boxes for Crimson Vow, Midnight Hunt. Um, they're back in like 80s. I wouldn't be surprised to go back to the 90s plus tax on one. And Kamigawa Draft is over $100 a box plus tax. Oh, yes, you in the back. Rudy, didn't you say something about a price increase? Yes, I did. Thanks for actually paying attention, Lumberg. Um, you can actually visit my, my stepsister. Oh, okay. You know, um, yeah. With the upcoming price increase, you're going to see the sea level go up. When the water level goes up, all those ships from last year, little booster boxes, they're going to look very cheap, and they're going to adjust upwards in price to be in line with everything else in the market. So I do think that, um, I'm not going to call it yet, but I remember saying in the month of May and June that within 30, 60, 90 days, we would be in a bottoming process. I don't want to curse myself. Um, but I do believe we are in a bottoming process and we are probably, we, I don't want to say the worst is over because they always jinx yourself when you do that, but we are either the worst is over, we're close to it, or we are at the worst right now. I believe we are on the edge of things really being more stable and turning in the Magic the Gathering CZG world. And once that happens and stabilizes, we're going to see that spill into other things. Now, Pokemon has already stabilized and been doing very well. You got Astral Radiance holding it 100 plus tax. Brilliant stars on TCG play just hit 140 plus tax going higher. I mean, you've got, uh, I think Fusion Strike is stable. Chilling Rain. Should I make a follow up video or are people just going to accuse me of pumping and dumping? But you know, I love your stuff. I always got to pump and dump your stuff. I mean, she makes great breakfast. Chilling Rain is over $100 a box plus tax now. $100 plus tax. I thought for sure, even when I did my 3,000 box position of Chilling Rain, it was going to take me years for that thing to go back up. But I believe long term. Never in a million years did I think literally here would be four or five months later that it would turn that quick. But again, you can't predict it. You can't, you can't, <coughs> excuse me, you can't predict this stuff. It may go back down. Who knows? So Pokemon's already stabilized and recovered. Rudy, nine billion Pokemon cards. Wow. Oh God, calm down, Timmy. Go get yourself a party pack. But you know, now that Pokemon continues to do really stable and seems well, and now I'm seeing signs for the first time in the last seven to 10 days Post double masters, I've seen signs of I've seen solid signs of stabilization in the secondary market for sealed product and magic. Now remember, we are leaving hopefully a bare, really bad, cruel summer. Now keep in mind, there are literally all these magic products, like five, ten magic products that have all done terrible, negative returns, no money, everybody's lost, that have not done well in the last 12, 18 months since we've had this downturn. Now, when market conditions tend to shift, the most beaten down assets and the most beaten down items tend to be the most aggressive rebounding type things. In other words, rubber band theory kicks in, ladies and gentlemen. If you're new to the channel, rubber band, when you hold it at neutral with no pressure, no resistance, the more you push, the more you yank that rubber band and you stretch it down, the deeper it goes down, the more the rubber band is trying to pull back up. If it pull, if you push or pull a rubber band down a little bit, yeah, you got a little uptick and a little volatility. But when you yank a rubber band straight down, Boulder's Gate at 179, Crimson Val at 70 bucks, AFR Draft at $79, Midnight Hunt at 79, all these garbage cheap prices that are just stretched to the floor of fire sale, you're gonna have aggressive recovery when economic conditions improve. And I do believe as we approach the end of the year and move forward, we are going to see it and I will report on it. And if I'm wrong, we will also report that Rudy, uh, yeah, here we are six months later and I said in the cruel summer things will be coming back up and they're not and I totally hosed you and I got that shit wrong. And I hope I don't have to make that video, but I feel like that's the direction we're headed where things are going to stabilize. So that's really today's video is the stabilization and the signs that I'm finally seeing after the stock market peaked nine months ago in October, November of 2021, and crypto and stocks have been going down for eight and a half months, collectibles have been going down for eight and a half months, I think we finally have been flushed out. Enough wealth destruction, enough insanity has occurred that we are starting to see true value, true pricing, and the pricing of where things are going to be able to rebuild from here. Um, oh, yeah.
the worst unproduct ever made by Wizards. Never even ran a sale of the patrons of that item because it just did so bad. Stores paid 30 bucks for them, and here we are. What's the hell? Many, how many years has this been? Two years. Two years later. Paid $30 a piece for these things wholesale. I think the market's still like 35 bucks. It's fucking stupid. Uh, we gotta have another video about this new unset coming because this is it's gonna be a big deal. It's gonna do really well. This unique stickers and these space shock lands are gonna be pretty cool, man. All right, folks, that's all I have today. I just wanted to let everybody know as I sit here in the uh, third floor basement of my ex that uh, I love Commander Legends 1. Um, <sighs> I still love Kaldheim. I still love Kaldheim. That was a great product. I really enjoyed that product. What is this? Hey, a random mystery box on the floor. Um, sorry, I'm still not a fan of mystery boxes. What else we got? Oh yeah, the double feature. So these cases of double feature, are these these are tiny boxes, real skinny. Uh, love love the double feature stuff. Super cheap, very hated. Is there any barcode? Very very dismissed product. People did not were not a fan of this thing. And I uh, still love that product. Uh, tiny print run, not well received. Love it. What else we got going on in the background here? Oh man, check this out, folks. Good old Ixalan. Ah oh, man. You know, I got a better one here. I got a good one for you guys. Rivals of Ixalan. You know, when um, I think this was this. I think Rivals of Ixalan is the least selling magic box I ever offered. I think it was like 3% of the patrons bought it. Nobody bought it. Seven, that was $79. That was back in the day before the price increase. Yeah. Now here's a fun story. Here's a good one here, folks. You know what's weird? I get so many messages and people saying they love to end my videos because they know I do crazy stuff. And I get to show random stuff and people love seeing the random weird things in these videos. It's a crazy. It's almost like a cult following now. Uh, Core 2015. Man, what a story. I did a mini mass box opening on this thing of like 100, 200 boxes. A mini. It wasn't a large quantity. M15 was such a good product. I think M15 was Wizards did the big press release where they, were, where they were stretching the card frames and making thinner black borders to put more text in the card. Anybody remember that? I think I just drooled on myself. Ooh, taco sauce. It's like mild sauce. So I know I should have eaten all those tacos before the video. And um, I think it's when they started the hollow stamp, too, to prevent the counterfeiters from ruining magic. Remember, the counterfeiters are going to get so good, everything in magic is going to zero. I remember those videos. I remember people telling me that. I remember those posts. Rudy's going to lose everything when the counterfeiters, everything goes to zero. I think it was 2017. 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. That was six years ago. Hmm. So anyways, uh, Core 2015, you know, the least printed core set in modern times. 2015 core. I think these box prices are probably almost $300 a box now. These things were so underprinted. M15 didn't sell worth a crap. Such a good product, too. Didn't even do crap. That happens sometimes. Some products just are just, they're so good, just doesn't sell. And other products are terrible and they still do well. And Anyways, all right, I think we should cut the video off. As always, folks, hope you learned something today. Make sure you think for yourself. Don't let the creepy Rudy Empire influence you. If you do, thanks for watching. I make a third of a penny when you watch. And uh, as always, we like to end all of these very important videos on a very important sentimental note. And that is my penis.